Hello everyone, welcome back to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. We are going to be continuing our little project that we're working on. So far, we have two tables created. We have a users table and a projects table. This is great and all, but it's very limiting. That's because you can only create projects, but you can't add anybody to these projects. How useful is that? Not at all. So if you go back a couple of videos, you'll find a video where we talked about the design for this project. And we were going to have a project users table. So essentially it's a table that says what users are a part of what projects. So if you're thinking of the workflow for our project, a person would create a project, invite all their friends, and then those friends or whatever could join the project and be a part of it, or they could be assigned to it. So since I have all of these other tables, I'm just going to comment those out by going to, uh, I don't even remember, <laughs> source toggle line comments. Now let's focus on creating that other table. So let's say create table and we'll name it project users. And what columns are going to be in this table? It's literally only going to be two foreign keys. So the first one is going to be the user ID, and then the second one is going to be the project ID. Now in the previous videos, I talked about naming the constraints, but we're actually going to put a giant primary key on top of both of these combined. So I'm gonna be a sinner for a moment and I'm not gonna name these, but don't tell anyone, it's a secret. <laughs> so to do that, we're just gonna say references, and it's going to reference the users table, and the column it's going to reference is the user ID column. Beautiful. We'll do the same for the project ID, but it's going to reference the projects table and the project ID. And uh, I should probably learn how to spell references. <laughs> I thought I got an A in spelling one time, but then I realized that A is actually an F, which makes sense why I got that grade. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was a... Uh... That was really, really lame. <laughs> so here we have our extremely unprofessional, unnamed foreign keys. But now we're going to add a primary key on top of these. But we're going to do that at the table level, so that way we can, you know, make up for our unprofessionality. So to do this, we need to use the constraint keyword. And now we're just going to name it the convention we've been using, the table name, followed by an underscore, followed by PK. So it'll be project underscore users underscore PK. We need to say that it's a primary key, and then we need to say what column that primary key is on. Now this is one of the benefits of using table level constraints, because you can actually pass in multiple columns here. So the first one, it can be user ID, and then the second one can be project ID. And what that is saying is that the combination of these have to be unique. So multiple rows can repeat the user ID, for example, and multiple rows can repeat the project ID, but the combination has to be unique. This is also going to index the combination of these columns. So we're getting like two great things in one line. <laughs> wow. So let's run this command, see if it works. Okay, there's something broken, and I forgot to add a comma right here. So always remember when you add the constraint at the table level, you need to throw it in there as if it's another column and add a comma to the previous columns. Let's give this another try. Okay, you can see down here that the table was created. So we got this table created. It's nice, it's beautiful, but the thing is, if we ever try to delete a user or a project, Oracle is just going to bark at us and tell us, no, nah, it ain't happening, man. That's because by default, when you try to delete a parent that is being referenced by a foreign key, it's going to throw an error. And what that means is we need to add the on delete keyword. So to do that, we need to go over here and say on delete, and I think I'm going to use cascade. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to add the constraint not null. That's because there should always be a value for this column. Same for the project ID. And on delete, we'll make this one cascade too. Essentially what that means is if a user gets deleted, it's going to delete all of the rows in this table that reference that user. And the same for projects. If a project's deleted, it'll delete all the projects in this table that reference that project. And you can see how this gets pretty dangerous when you're always cascading things because it'll just delete everything, as I mentioned in the previous video. So please be careful with this. So before we can rerun this command, we're going to have to drop the table. So we'll say drop table project users add a semicolon and we can just run it. 
All right, so you can see the table was created. Now real quick, let's insert some data and see what happens when we delete things. I'm gonna write out the SQL and you can copy it if you want. That's because I don't really wanna distract from the purpose of this video. So first off, I was messing around with this and to clear out the tables, I run these commands. But we're not gonna need those for now, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. The first thing, we're going to insert two people into the users table. We're going to insert a project and then we're going to insert a project user. So we'll start with the first one and we'll just run these one at a time. So we got that row inserted, got that row inserted. All right, so this one caused an error, what's up? Oh yeah, that's because we referenced the username, not the ID. So I need to pass in the username here as Caleb Curry. There we go, we got that one. And finally, let's create a project user. Okay, we also got an issue here. Let's see what this is about. Oh, that's because I put the columns in user ID, project ID. I'm going to flip those just to make things a little bit more clear. It makes more sense to have project user since the table's project users. We'll need to drop that table and then recreate it. So let's try this again. <laughs> oh, finally, we got that working. Now, if you wanna actually see that data, you can run these select statements and I'll extend this so you can see everything. So here's the first table, the user table, the project table, and then the project users table. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's delete a project and see what happens. Done, done, done. Oh, there's an error. Okay, let's add the uh, project underscore there. Uh, totally didn't make that mistake. Done, done, done. One row deleted, no errors. But now if we go back to this project users table, let's run this command. And you can see there's no rows to return. So it just deleted it, doesn't even care. So overall, we have a pretty good structure for our database. The only thing we should consider is adding some indexes. And that's what we'll be discussing in the upcoming videos. Please keep at it, click like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.